Okay, welcome everybody to the weekly Inside Real Estate Conversion KV Core uh, Tactics webinar. Um, we focus on traffic and conversions on these sessions, and uh, they are all recorded. I like to say that every time. Can somebody please just let me know you can hear me so I know I'm not talking to uh, air? And uh, they are recorded, and they the links to the recordings can be found in the doc that I'm about to share with you right now with the notes for today's uh, episode. So let me go ahead here. Thank you, Sarah. You guys can hear me, that's great. And I will send the doc to everybody. And as you can see up on the screen here, this is gonna be a lot of fun. I've been wanting to do this for a few weeks, but uh, kind of have had to wrap my head around it. And I'll, I'll admit, I'm not fully there yet, mostly because I'll admit that I'm not a user of this platform yet. Maybe I'm a little old uh, or I'm just slow in adopting, but um, I do like to keep my eyes open for uh, new sources of traffic and want to be aware of things. And I think uh, we all benefit, we're all going to benefit from doing the same. So we did Twitter a few weeks ago. We've been delving into some, we did some video conversions last week. And this week we're going to do ch Snapchat with that awesome ghost icon right there. Intro to Snapchat advertising for real estate pros. So just curious, guys, chat with, chat for me and just let me know whether or not you use Snapchat. Let me know if you have an account. Uh, and you never logged in again, or <laughs> if you uh, if you actually regularly use it. Um, I'm just curious. And, and what's your favorite filter? <laughs> See, I don't even know what you're talking about. All right, no, I, I, mean, I kind of you, you gotta get you gotta get hit with the youngins. I mean, <laughs> that's a really good point, Annalisa. So you know, the audience is gonna tend to be younger. My 13 year old only uses Snapchat and Instagram. He makes fun of me for just being on Facebook all day. Um, and this is the new frontier and an opportunity to, to stay ahead of the curve, you know, versus what your competitors are doing. They're still busy buying uh, overpriced uh, Zillow ads. And, uh, you know, Facebook's still the biggest game in town, but I think this is a really relevant channel for us to check out. So, uh, I see ads all the time you, on Snapchat because I'm an avid user of it. So it's pretty effective. And I've actually bought a few things from Snapchat via advertising. So I think there's an audience there for sure. Awesome. So Annalisa, who is, you're probably a contemporary of mine, I imagine. I've never talked to you about that, but um, <laughs> you, you use it every day. I do. Um, yeah. All right. And then a few of you guys do. Dusty uses them for open houses and new listings, which is, of course, probably a great use. Dusty, I'd be curious to know what kind of uh, kind of ads you're running, like if you're running, um, are you just doing it organically or if you're using the ads platform? And then uh, I'll jump right in here and we'll start. Um, so, uh, introduction slides, how Snapchat works. There is uh, a video over at forbusiness.snapchat.com that I found to be kind of helpful about halfway down the page. And for those of you who just kind of don't know what the experience is, um, if you watch this video here, it'll kind of give you the lowdown. Now, let me see if it'll play. Okay, so I'll let you guys watch that. A little bit of what you're getting, guys, is uh, go to webinar, and then we're trying to load a lot of pages here, especially with Snapchat. So I'm sorry if I'm breaking up and down. Uh, Annalisa, you do sound like you're in a fishbowl to me too. Um, I don't know if, that, if something's going on with your mic. Um, so, uh, so you can watch the video, learn how it works, um, and then there is a, an awesome slide deck that I got from Gabe, my uh, account rec which I have right here. And I'm gonna attempt to um, scroll through it. And let's hope that it doesn't mess with GoToWebinar too much. It seemed a little heavy before. Annalise, can you still hear me? All right, I'm gonna keep going. So um, why people use Snapchat? You can see some, some examples of the app in use here. Um, can Cameras to the home screen. <laughs> I think that was typing. Uh, why advertise on Snapchat? Uh, so the argument here is that uh, Snapchat's making is that the audience does have spending power. Um, that's not so relevant to you, to us as it would be to e-commerce users, but uh, I guess the point would be that there are people who are going to buy a home here, and especially if you're looking at the first-time buyer segment, um, you know these are going to be sort of tech-savvy, uh, you know, up-and-coming people, the next generation. So they're definitely worth looking at. So um, 191 million global active daily Snapchatters, and that's been my experience. There is plenty of traffic here. Um, you know, it's smaller than Facebook, probably. Uh, definitely, maybe probably smaller than Twitter. I'm not sure. 
Um, but there is a lot of traffic to be had here in any, uh, you know, any metro area. Uh, average, at, okay, average household income. Now, I don't know where to get these numbers, but they claim that Snapchatters are making 90 grand a year versus 74 for the average household income. That's awesome, 24% higher. Uh, there's some data here about what they're buying and spending on. Um, uh, this I thought was interesting that a lot of Snapchat users, and I guess this makes sense, my slide's freezing a little, but a lot of Snapchat users don't go on any other platforms in a given day. And that's similar with Facebook, Twitter, you know, people tend to stick with what they're at. And I think that's instructive for what we're doing here in this webinar series where we're talking about different channels. You know, if you're only focused on Facebook, you could be missing a lot of the potential audience base that you're looking to go after. You know, so it is a good idea to hit these different channels and to cross channel remarket and do those sorts of things. But 41% of Snapchatters are not going on any other given platform in your market. You know, Ryan, is that better? Yeah. yeah okay. Better, yeah. So, so from my perspective of having a lot of friends who are like in their 20s to mid 30s, uh, the majority of my friends in that age group are using Snapchat and Snapchat only. So it, it, it's been interesting for me to kind of see that being a Gen Xer myself and being like tied to, you know, Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, and we're all on Facebook, and you know, I'm not saying not to advertise on Facebook, but um, if you are looking at the first time buyer audience and you want a chance to build a brand for yourself, I think there's a really big opportunity for those of us who are fine with doing video. Um, you want a place to go get leverage out of the videos you're making? I, I have a hunch that this may give you better ROI for your time and money than than even Facebook. Um, Snapchat ads drive business results. So I don't know if that's relevant to us. I'm just going through these quick guys. You have the link. You can go through. This. There's some case studies. Um, one of the big things I want to show you is at the very end, slide 24, um, something that really got me excited. And in all my testing, I, I just finally ran an ad that does this. Um, and I'm going to skip to it here. So it has it has all the similar action, actions that you'll find in Facebook, you know, different objectives and things you can target for event wise. Um, it's the geeky stuff. But look at this. I'm gonna play this little video. What? <laughs> so one thing that, um, I, you might not have even seen it. Uh, one thing that Snapchat has similar to Facebook is they do have autofill, um, where if you have a mobile optimized web page with, I think it's email, zip code, name, and it might be address. I think those are the four fields with any of those fields it can autofill it for you. Uh, and this this excites me because, you know, as you know, uh, Conversion has a landing page generator that is very well optimized for mobile. Um, and I suspect, I'm going to see the results of my campaign here soon. I suspect the opt-in rate should be pretty good on that if they're pre-filling the information and your call to action on the landing page is good. So big takeaway, guys, you can pre-fill email addresses. Did anybody else just, you know, totally geek out and fall off your chair and get excited about that? Probably not. All right, so that's just a quick overview. Um, I'm gonna now go in and just show you where to go for to run an ad in Snapchat. I believe it's ads.snapchat.com, okay? Um, and up on the screen here, I'm gonna try to stick to the outline, but I've been playing around my ad guy, Gabe. I don't know if he's on or not, um, he'll comment. But you know, he's told me that I, I got some work to do in terms of getting my uh, cost per swipe up and, and stuff down. But you can see over here, um, looking for my drawing tool. Sorry, I don't I don't have a hard time with it and go to webinar. Um, but over here on the right side, make this a little bigger for you guys. Um, to get somebody to swipe up has been costing me uh, between 78 and 93 cents for an average of 85 cents. So that's what it's cost, cost me with my very rushed creatives. I haven't spent a lot of time on them um, to get people to kind of take the first action, which is to swipe up in Snapchat. Um, and that's exciting. And a lot of these were just one or two day tests, uh, just so I could see whether or not there was traffic there. So we're getting 20,000 impressions here, 26,000 impressions here, you know, 106 swipe ups on this campaign. It was probably a two day campaign. Um, that's good. There, that, that just tells me there's a lot of action here and a lot of opportunity to optimize these campaigns, you know, and get things going. Okay. Um, so I'll just show you a, a few example campaigns before we run through step by step. 
Um, this one campaign here is a mortgage ad. And, and it has generated some leads. I don't have the exact numbers. Uh, it's only been 82 spent. In mortgage, we're happy, you know, even in the 20 to $30 range if the quality is okay, because uh, this is driving to a full, pretty much a full quote form. Um, so this is targeting people 25 to 34 years old. Uh, and it's got a low down payment mortgage approval call to action. So I'll bring it up here. Okay, and the, you'll see here, it's kind of moving slow. Um, but basically, I have I had a video um, from Slidely with, with a woman dancing. She just got her house and it says, get pre-approved for a mortgage and buy a house. And then we're just going out to basically an, an optimized application form that converts well already to Facebook or Google. And that's the cool thing here. If you guys are already driving traffic on other channels, um, you might find that you need different pages, but at least you can start to test quickly with campaigns you already know, and know are working on other networks. So um, that's that, that's kind of what it looks like. Um, let me see if I can edit. And we'll get to the creation of the creative here in a minute. Um, and then here's the autofill and the preloading. Okay, um, so that was the mortgage. That's about 80 cents to get somebody to swipe up and check out a mortgage uh, offer. Um, and then the other offer that I'm running, of course, is my real estate deals uh, offer here. Yeah, the pre-fill, Scott's making a good point. The pre-fill pulls them, it's a good way to put that, it pulls them one step closer to uh, converting. Like they, they don't have to take that extra step and fill out an email. So it's definitely gonna help, it can't hurt. Um, Let's see, where is one of the deals? I think this was a deal campaign. So this ad was targeting people about to move according to data that Snapchat Snapchat had on hand. So that's really, you know, cool. Because <laughs> we know that, you know, that's an interesting thing that we're not gonna have on Facebook anymore. So you're gonna have some of that targeting. Um, that's from shoppers, data logic movers, pre-movers is the category what they call it okay and let me bring up the ad okay i remember now so i have a video where i'm crying because my my girlfriend left me we were we were engaged but we lost the house because we weren't pre-approved for a mortgage so it just says see why ryan's crying i don't know if that's the best creative but i just want to see if i get the click and was able to so um one thing I've learned and heard is that you are going to get better play if you take time with the creative. We're going to jump in that here in a minute. Uh, for those of you who like to design stuff, you like to take videos, you're really going to like this. For those of you who don't, I'm going to try to show you kind of how to get by uh, pretty quickly as we run it and, and create an ad now. So uh, before we create an ad, I like to do this for every platform we talk about. Let's first talk about preparation. Um, and you know, good practice, you don't have to do this, but good practice is to drop the pixel for any ad platform you're using so you can start to build audiences and so that you can let the platform start to learn about your traffic and optimize. I don't know what the geeks at these ad platforms are doing, uh, but you know, they all say if the pixel's installed, then we can learn about the audience and we can serve better ads. So the first thing we're gonna do is drop the Snapchat pixel. So let me go back to the home page here. I don't even have to go to the homepage. And if you click right up top here, this little drop down at the top left, you'll see the section where it says Snap Pixel. And when you see this, it's gonna look pretty familiar. Oh, this is cool, wow. Oh, cool. Um, so <laughs> I like the way it shows the data compared to, to Facebook right off the bat, because I, I dropped this a few weeks ago. Um, and it's telling me who was on iOS, Android, um, you know, what browsers are being used. This is really cool. So you can look up here, you go set up pixel and you just follow the instructions here. Um, you're gonna basically pop this into the head of your website, just like you did with Facebook. Now, if you're on KV Core, that is in the website section, Annalisa. And if you're on uh, Conversion Plus, you're just gonna email in a support ticket. Honestly, you could just send it, for both platforms, you can just send to support, hey, drop my snap code for me uh, and support right. me I'm happy to help you out with that. Yeah. Yeah, on the on the left hand side of the K plus dashboard, there's like a, a pixel like email support. And then via the, uh, the KD yeah. core, it's website IDX 
and then if you go on the edit website, the first section under general, you should see, see the analytic sections. Yep, and you're gonna to wanna to drop it right in the head. I think there's an option for the head. So we'll just show you real quick here. Um, website manager, edit settings, right? And definitely, guys, I know that this seems like a little extra work, but it's a really good idea to do before you start spending your money. Even if you don't know what you're doing now, as you learn about, you know, driving paid traffic, you're going to be glad you had the pixel installed. So you get the data. And then you'll be on. able to see the difference from when you started That's to when you started to become an expert. Yeah. So here you can see I already have my Twitter installed here from a few weeks ago. And it's right here. It's just in the custom head section of the website. Okay. Um, you can also drop uh, conversion code in in, uh, in Snapchat, and there's some documentation. Um, it's very similar to Facebook, where there's a little you see where it says Snap TR Track Page View toward the bottom here. When I hover it, it blocks it out, but I think it's lead or something. And there's some documentation about that that I can uh, sneak in. But if you click the documentation tab right here in yellow, it'll show you how to track a conversion too, if you'd like to. Okay, uh, and that's only for KV Core. I don't think that's built in the Conversion Plus yet. All right, so we got the pixel out of the way. Uh, next thing I'll just mention very quickly is that you can retarget and start to build audiences the same way you can with Facebook. So I'll click same way again at the top left. You can go to audiences and uh, we'll click new you, new audience. And uh, so right here we can do snap audience match and upload a list of users. So if you have a list of leads um, that you've gotten maybe from Facebook ads, Now's an opportunity to upload those leads to Snapchat um, and start showing them on another channel. You will appear to be everywhere. You want to you want to be everywhere you can to that one person, even if you're only spending, you know, even if you're small budget, you still look like your big budget and people start to trust you from that sort of thing. Um, the other way you have lookalikes and let me see what saved audience means. I'll admit I did not play around with this prior. Um, I'm sure there's a way, Gabe, if you're on, is there a way to uh, target by website URL? And Lori, to answer your question, what we posted in the header field was the Snapchat pixel code that you got when you clicked on pixel. So we, it, you just copy it and you paste the whole thing in, in into the custom header up here, which we found by going to audiences and clicking on snap pixel. Okay, so uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go too heavy here. Bottom line is you can build audiences. You can either do them up front or you can do them later. And we talked about this when we did the retargeting, when we've done Google, Facebook, we did the Twitter session. Basically, you're gonna you can retarget based on where people are going on your site. So if you're really promoting a specific listing and you have another listing in the same neighborhood, you can show all those people, uh, same people, the ad. That's just one example use case. Okay. All right. So let's get have some fun now. And uh, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to create a down and dirty snap ad without getting too fancy. Um, so let's go in here to the dashboard, to the homepage of the dashboard. A Little bit sluggish. I will grade the dashboards though in terms of how bad they bog down your computer because I spent a lot of time in all of them. I'm gonna say that Snapchat and Twitter win. They're about head to head. They're the fastest in my opinion. Facebook's next can be pretty sluggish and Google AdWords has been awful. <laughs> so dashboard has nothing, I don't know, just a tangent. I, for anybody at Snapchat listening, good job. Your dashboard doesn't take forever to load. All right, so let's go right here and go new campaign up top. And we're gonna go, we're gonna take the quick and easy route right here. Okay, let's name it. All right, Annalisa, I'm gonna let you inspire. What kind of ad should I run today? Uh, I would look at first time home buyers who are maybe just graduating out of college or like like my, the group of people that I hang out with a lot. So like between like 24 to 32, 35, you know. What, what should we offer them? Just like I think it would be tips on how why i renting to owning. A lot of my my friends are looking right now to actually buying homes instead of renting because they're seeing more value in that. Because mm -hmm. I think they're a lot more savvy because of the information available to them. So I would say you'd have to offer like what's the with them? What are they going to benefit from? Let's, so I would say how 
how about rent? How to, to convert your cash? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna do rent to own homes off my off my KV site because it's just easy. <laughs> I don't have to I don't have to prepare a report or anything. I'm just gonna grab a link from the site. So rent to own own properties. And for those of you guys who are thinking, I don't want to do rent to own. Uh, I don't want to touch that at all. Just know that this will attract people who can buy homes. All right, it's 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 a good hook. Uh, and don't get obsessed with the idea that you're attracting people who necessarily want to rent to own. It's just getting them into your fold so you can get them pre-approved and moving along. Um, shareable right here. This is a cool option. It says allow Snapchatters to share your ad with their friends. I can't see why you wouldn't click that. You would love it if your ad goes viral and you get free traffic, right? Uh, I will put my name in here. You know, name and company. Um, and I'll just do uh, St. Pete rent to own homes as my headline. And I meant to ask the rep, I always forget where that shows up. It kind of shows up right up here. It's very faint guys, but it kind of, I think it shows up right up on the screen up at the top. Like as people are on Snapchat browsing, it just tells them who the ad is from. Um, you might even get creative and put your cell and phone number in that headline if you have a room like this. I wonder what that, that might be cool. You see, I can see it. You guys might not be able to, but it's right up at the top right. Um, might be interesting. Or you would do like the headline, like stpetefixeruppers.com <laughs> instead of, you know what I mean? So that they can also go to the, I don't know, just a thought. Um, top Snap Media. Now I have created some. So uh, one thing to know is that it can be a little tedious to create the actual uh, ad, but if it's already created, then you can go back and use them at any time. Um, and you'll see, I have some that I've played with here and created, all right? But I wanna show you guys how to create these in sort of a down and dirty, easy way, all right? So create. Uh, the, the, and by the way, this sort of, I forget what they call the tool, but is really flexible, is really well done. Um, so even if you're not very, you don't, you don't have graphic design skills, you can go ahead and get rolling with this fast. In fact, they have a number of templates that are just taking a minute to load on my computer here, probably go to webinar bogging us down, but they have a number of templates you can just use off the shelf that have cool, interesting um, designs in them. Now, I'm just gonna start from scratch though, and I'm sorry those aren't showing, you'll see them when you load them up on your screen. And we're doing rent to own homes, right? So, in Instead of me making you watch me go find a picture, uh, I'll just grab this picture. This is my house before I bought it and it was painted. <laughs> this is Google Street View years ago. So I'll just grab a picture here, let it load up. And you see the upload, you can easily upload any image you want right here. So there it goes. And then I can resize it like that. I can drag it around, okay? And then if I hit this little plus layer up top, now it's not like a layer like Photoshop where it's gonna drive you insane if you don't know Photoshop. It's actually really easy to deal with. Um, I can then do text and click inside and just type rent to own, all right? Something like that. Right, and then I need to uh, do my fill color here, yellow. One thing that I couldn't find, I wish I could do a background and it might just be me not finding it, um, or maybe it's not available. It'd be nice if I could highlight it background with a with a highlighter and then have black or, or you know, make it really stand out and be ugly. Uh, they have these text effects here. Oh, what's that? Maybe that'll do it. Oh. That worked. So the, the thing I was just talking about, fit line fill will let you do this. And I just think it makes it easy. It just kind of pops and you can see it, um, you know, other than it being on the background. Then you can drag the sign. All right. And I can add as many images and photos as I want. What's the star thing? I'm curious. All right, well, that's kind of fun. <laughs> I don't know. There's a star thing in there for some reason. All right. So uh, I don't want that right now. And then this will follow the format I've talked about with Facebook ads. I'm going to do what the type of property is. And then I'm probably just going to do one more. See the list now. All rent to own 
properties in St. Pete. All right. Now I'm doing this quick because we're on a webinar. I don't want to make you guys watch, you know, painfully watch me do this the whole time. Um, but you can really get creative here. You can even include videos inside of what shows here. Um, so just know there are lots of possibilities. Let's see if I can do that again. <laughs> All right. Oh boy. All right. Start from there and then black. I'm trying to remember how I just did what I just did. There we go. Okay, uh, another tip you can do, you can actually put a square in like this. This is what I wanted to show you. Um, drop that down. And you can kind of have the section at the bottom like that. Uh, and that's what I'll do here. I'll just drag this down here. Okay, I had to play with where it kind of showed up on the screen. So I think you're getting, I think you're seeing the point um, that it can be a little tedious. Uh, I've only done this a handful of times at this point, um, but let's see. Oh, I'm gonna get rid of that. Get rid of that. Okay, and I'm gonna do the square first, just a tip. I bet you that helps. All right, now let's do the text. And I'm just gonna put white text on top. All right, see, see all the same, see all, all same P list. Yeah, something like that. And then for good measure, you saw me post in the group yesterday. Maybe you did. I put something on the um on the roof of the house is one of my favorite techniques, or in the front yard. Um, just for good measure. I don't know whether or not it's working. I have a spider here. I have my guy. Let's put a spider on the roof. And I guess the thinking there is for people to stop and go, what the heck is that? And comment. And, you know, the weirder you can get, the more viral you have a chance of going with these ads. So that's always something to consider uh, there. So not the prettiest ad, uh, but just for, for the purposes of giving you guys some guidance when you go to create them, uh, that's pretty much how it goes. Okay. So there you go, it doesn't look awful, right? And you'll see here it has this kind of swipe up. And then when they swipe up, I believe this is where the magic happens and that pre-fill can come into play off of our landing pages, right? So they swipe up and they can see the page with the pre-fill and continue on. So I'm gonna click looks good. And then I don't have to go back and do this every time. I can reuse this ad if I'm playing with this similar niche in the future. And I think you can probably load these and edit them, but don't don't uh, hold me to that. All right, so next thing we'll do, it says select attachment type. Now this is easy to miss. Um, I kind of, it's just a little vague. I wish it was more uh, kind of out there or that the options were, you know, you can see them because it, I've actually scrolled past after all that effort doing the media. <laughs> it's like your head, your head's about to explode and you scroll down to the part where you pick your targeting, but you got to pick this. And what I'm going to recommend you guys do for now is just focus on website. And then the web view URL. Now, Annalisa, should I build a landing page really quickly here? Just so everybody can see that. I think so. And then also, you know, when you're speaking to like the, the websites, it's super easy to go and buy that domain at GoDaddy and have people directing right back to your site. So there's so many ways you can tie all of this together. Yeah. yeah right? Good point. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so what Annalisa is saying, you could put the domain name prominently in the ad itself, uh, you know, and get a little and kind of brand the idea, the niche property list. Um, so I'm going to go here. I'm doing a rent to own ad. So let's go here i'll just do all pinellas county uh options i believe it's an option lease to own search i always like to make sure i'm in list view it looks like i am and these are sort of from top to bottom i'm going to sort from lower to high um to try to get engagement i guess it doesn't matter sometimes 
you know, you can just use your judgment when you're sorting from low to high or high to low, what you think would pull people into your site more. Like if there's a really cool high end looking property or a really interesting looking low end shell or something. In this case, the high end was probably more interesting. So I'll stick to that. And then I need to grab this link. And just so you know, you could drive the Snapchat traffic straight to this, right? Because we know that conversion and core will eventually create, generate the lead for us. But I'm, I'm especially excited about that pre-fill on the contact info. So I am going to go ahead and take the time uh, to build out a landing page. So see the list. That's my button. My URL after login is the search that I just ran. My hashtag can be Snapchat rent R2O. So I know it was, came from Snapchat rents own. And uh, my background, I won't go crazy on that now. I'll just leave the, the girl there. I'll get rid of all the other bullet points because I want it to be a snap judgment. Ha ha ha, snap judgment. All right, so snap decision. Um, so they're going to come here and it's just going to say uh, uh, Pinellas County rent to own homes. And then one of my favorite uh, subheadlines is uh, priced from 220K. to 3 million plus okay you know you can get try to get accurate with that range and then for the cell for the cell text call to action uh if you enter your cell number we'll call you to discuss the rent to own process process within one business hour so um you know, it's good to offer a reason why they should enter their cell on these forms. And I believe there are some updates to the landing page generator coming up that will give you more options. You won't have to leave the cell there. You can put it on, require it. But for now, I like to give a reason why they would want to so it induces the cell number. And then we will just hit save. I'll get my link here. And I'm good to go to paste that into Snapchat. Okay. Now, here's the important thing. This is another thing you can miss, and I recommend just go slow as you do this. Allow autofill. Yes, I want that autofill. And allow preloading. It'll make things go faster. I don't see why not. So go ahead and turn those two on. Uh, select location. This is cool. Now, you can drill down the postal codes, uh, and you can go by metros. I didn't see it. It frustrated me a little bit. I didn't see a way to do just a city. So in my case, I want to do um, – I, would, I don't really want to leave St. Pete ever because uh, it's paradise, but <laughs> I don't want to do any business outside of St. Pete. So St. Pete, but it gives me Tampa, St. Pete, Sarasota. So I may need to go back and do one zip code at a time and add a bunch of zip codes. Um, that's up to you. The other awesome thing that I noticed is that you can choose location categories and look at this. Real estate services. So because Snapchat is like a super mobile, you know, you've got your location data on and it's mobile optimized, somehow they know that you're hanging out at a KW or that, the, you know what I mean? Um, or something real estate. Look at that data. audience size. Yeah, what audience that? size, yeah. 1.8 million. Right when you changed it to real estate services, it changed to 1.8 million on potential Snapchatters. Yeah, I don't know that that's... I don't, maybe that's the whole one. I don't know that there are 1.8 million in Tampa, St. Pete in a real estate services. I mean, uh, it's summer. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I got you. And, and there are sizable audiences here. Um, so near real estate services, you know, I need to find out, this was just like I ran into the same problem with Twitter. Um, I'm going to assume that this means both. I hope, right? So that this means both that they're in St. Pete and they're near real real estate services. This could mean that they are only that they that they are, you know, nationwide around real estate services within a half mile. So uh, we can ask Gabe about that. His email is going to be in the doc, by the way, uh, for questions. Um, but if you do want to use this real estate services, this might be an interesting thing to use just for retargeting. Too. Okay. So we'll keep moving on. Ages. Well, let's just. Assume that we're going to target people over 35, and uh, maybe we'll only go up to 31. Uh, languages, pretty straightforward. Pick the languages. Advanced demographics. This is where it gets really, really fun. 
So you said college graduates, right? That was that was actually the first one that came up. Yeah. So very cool. So this is telling me now twenty five thousand to twenty seven thousand dollar college grad Snapchatters in Tampa St. Pete who are near uh, a real estate service. Let me see what happens if I go a tenth of a mile or who have been near. So I'm not going to, I don't know how accurate this info is, this near real estate services, but I thought it was cool it was there. All right. So uh, operating systems, Android or iOS, you may find later that iOS converts better for you than Android, and then you optimize for that. Uh, you can do device makes because this is a mobile app. They know. Um, maybe you have an opinion that people who are still using iPhones, you would want nothing to do with, because why would you still use an iPhone, <laughs> you know, or something, uh, you know, whatever it is. Uh, or maybe you only want to target BlackBerry users because you figure they have like a corporate job, you know. Um, so you can do that there. Connection type, uh, I like to do with people who are on a Wi-Fi wi right now. Let's see if that works. If I don't get enough traffic, you can open it up to all. Um, and T-Mobile uh, or AT&T, you can pick the carrier if you want. I'm just going to leave it for all carriers, though. Uh, status active, you can, start and, you can start and end at a specific time. And leave all this, the auto bid and everything else. And now here's one thing that I was just talking to the rep about. You actually can only advertise $50 a day right now. You have to set your ad set at 50 a day, but your individual ads can be $10 each for five ads. Now, what he told me, you know, I said this could be problematic because a lot of us, you know, aren't operating. We're not big brands and big corporate advertisers. A lot of us are operating in small local markets and we couldn't even handle $50 worth of leads a day because we don't have time for the follow up. Uh, so a lot of people will want to do five to 10. What he told me was to just restrict down your audience, get it under 10 or 15,000 and play with your audience size uh, and make it hard for Snapchat to find that $50 and you'll end up only spending the five or 10. So that's a hack for now. And he said that they are, um, they are looking at, you know, lowering that, making that possible. So that's that. So pretty straightforward, right guys? Um, that's how to run an ad. Uh, there are story ads right here, the top right. I'll just click in on that. You know, oh, let me make this live. Might as well see. So, Ryan, I was going to say that actually last night I saw a real estate ad for some of the, because I follow a lot of people on Instagram and Snapchat that are also clients of ours uh, from IRE, <laughs> like the folks that were that are listening now. And I yep. actually saw like a real estate agent in front of a house and he was motioning to to slide up with his whole body is like slide up slide up yeah. and that it encourages people to interact so it's kind of a fun way to have the interaction with people on snapchat yeah that you bring up a good point remember uh, i was doing we did probably two months ago or three months ago i did a few examples where i was outside my house saying hey i'm about to go inside this house um that would probably play really well where if you that's your ad it's like hey uh, i'm going to show you this thing swipe up to see inside and then you either right. take it into a video or the actual landing page for the property yep great thought yep and then these story ads are more advanced but basically you can you can create more sophisticated uh stories basically that are multi-phase i don't know much about them but if you do get heavy here just know that you can run these um kind of on the wall of uh, influencers and big corporate brands. Honestly, I'm bungling this up, but there's something cool you can do with story ads down the road. For now, stick with Snap, snap ads. And then what's- Hey, the um, <laughs> Gabe had something to add in. When you are setting the ad up, make sure to set it for bid for swipes, not impressions on the bottom right. So he wanted to make sure that we had that information. Oh, good, good. Bid for swipes, not impressions. I'll put that in the doc because I was yeah. wondering about that myself. So bid for swipes, not impressions, right here. Yep. This is, you know, I did this earlier, Gabe, and I couldn't, it didn't have the swipes available for me. Maybe, maybe because I already saved it. And, I'll, and I'll find I'll, out. I'll air a public grievance right now to, to the rep, because I know he's listening. <laughs> I, uh, I, guys, be careful. If you, if you go back to edit an ad, sometimes it's hard. A lot of times you end up, you have to clone it, or you have to recreate the whole ad set and copy it. Um, I'll just, I'll just have, I have a little gripe, but it, it is kind of hard to go back and edit your ads once you've made them. Okay. <laughs> you won't pick on them too much though. All right. So that's kind of the basic rundown. Does anybody have any other questions? Um, you know, bottom line is this is another channel. Um, if you are at a bigger, if you're running ads for a bigger team or a bigger 
office. This is definitely relevant to you because you want to hit everybody on as many channels as possible. Um, you get those pixels dropped for all the networks and you can start to cross channel remarket and lift people off of one platform onto another. You seem like you're everywhere. That builds trust in your name and your brand, increases the chances that they'll open your emails when Conversion and Core do their auto emailing and their texts. They'll know who you are. And uh, Snapchat in particular, for those of us who are into video and can do, want to get creative, I mean, this is really, this is a really good place to go. And, you know, another big point, we kind of touched on this, but all of our competitors are on Facebook running uh, seller ads and the same buyer ads. They're all running the what's my house word ad, you know, whereas there's probably, if there's one or two other people in your market doing it on Snapchat right now, that's probably a lot. So, uh -huh. there. Cool. Well, not not a lot of questions. I think everybody's probably looking at that slide deck and playing around with Snapchat right now. But uh, on the document down below, there is the email address of Gabe. Um, another cool thing about Snapchat is that they are not Facebook when it comes to customer service yet. They're they're trying to grow, so they've given me a lot of attention. And I wouldn't even be doing this right now if if this rep didn't you know stay with me. So thank you, Gabe. Um, you know, so if you need help, just email, you will get a reply. Um, if your ads are turned down or they're not working, just email, say, Hey, what's up? And you're going to get that kind of service right now with Snapchat. And that's a big deal. Any of us who have tried to, uh, deal with Google or Facebook know that they don't, they don't really care about the little guy and Snapchat still does. Let's hope they, they continue to. Anything else on your end, Annalisa? You do know the platform really well. Any other thoughts? I think... I think basically when you're looking at Snapchat, have fun. It's not something you need to put a whole lot of pressure on yourself with because it's more of a fun, lighthearted type of app. So I think you can include, like like Ryan was saying, you know, the visuals of swiping up or uh, texting in a code. You can even hold up a sign of like, text this code to this member to get information, and then they can click through to your ad or however you want to set it up. But basically it's having fun, looking at some of the filters, just kind of real you know, not having so much pressure on yourself with Snapchat as you might with something else. Does that make sense? Yeah, and it's not, you can become real estate famous, so to speak, in the sense that you well, got a new audience. Yes, because oh. some, yeah, yeah, some of these realtors that I've been following are like, they're calling themselves uh, uh, public figures. And they're actually changing things up to be a public figure on Instagram, on Snapchat. And it's pretty interesting to see that happening. Yeah. Yep. This so, is primarily, I've primarily seen it happening with Australian agents, but I'm starting to see it here in the U.S. So it's pretty interesting to see that transition. Yeah. So, so for you young people who have had a phone in your hand at this point, probably since you were 10, you know, or younger, I know my kids have had them since they were born. Um, this is your opportunity to take away market share from agents who are afraid of this stuff. For, for those of us who are over 40, um, <laughs> getting on, this is still the same opportunity because you have more experience and you know what you're talking about. <laughs> so right. You're going to be a pattern interrupt when you get on a Snapchat. You show that you have a little bit of fun. They're going to trust. They're going to actually trust your age and your professionalism if you can do it in a fun way. Right, because they can answer the with them. Well, what's in it for me? Well, my years of expertise and, I, you know, I'm using the, the software to get through that audience. Yep. Plus, plus is a good place to spy and see what your kids are up to. You got, you, they're, they're, they're doing weird things. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's that. Sure. <laughs> yeah. All, right. All right, guys. I, I guess we can go now. There haven't been a lot of questions, but um, thank you for being on this week. Next week, we're going to get uh, my buddy Ben, uh, who's a Google AdWords PPC guy. We did a webinar with him a few years ago. We're not going to talk about Google Ads in particular. We might touch upon them, but we're going to talk about tracking and using Google Analytics and really dig into the stuff you can do to watch what your audience is doing on your conversion and course sites. So we'll see you next week, Annalisa. Yes, sir. I will be here. Okay. Have a good one, everybody. We'll get the recording up as soon as possible. All right. Bye-bye.